Hello and welcome to the weekly broadcast of Living Faith by Philadelphia Ministries of Springfield, Ohio. Don't worry about what the world might do, what the world might say. Let them tremble at the name of Jesus of whose you are and whom it is you bring to the table. You see, when you begin to praise God in the good times and praise God in the bad times, your faith is solid in Him. You know that your God is going to prevail on your behalf. And now your host, Dr. David and Penny Reeves. Hi, and welcome to today's program. Penny's not with me today, but we are going to praise the Lord. Get ready right now, would you? Oh, what glory awaits me in heaven's bright city when I get there such sights I'll behold a million scenes of rare beauty will demand that I view them and still Jesus will outshine them all their glad praises forever oh but Jesus yes Jesus will outshine them all yes he will the sparkling river is flowing and happy faces all glowing a land of splendor where night never falls the golden glass gives reflection to that city's perfection but still jesus will outshine them all The glory that awaits me is found in Jesus alone. Yes. Yes, he will. He always has and he always will. My message today is going to be on surrender. And I'd like to sing this next song for you. I surrender all. This is off my new CD that's coming out. and It's available at ReverbNation.com forward slash David M. Reeves. Or you can just go ahead and call us here at the, the uh, ministry and we'll get one to you. I surrender all. I 
self-study correspondence pay-as-you-go Bible college. ABC focuses on absorbing the word and soaking in the spirit, using your Bible as a textbook, doing a no-hype study to discover the foundational truths of the word and its applications in today's life. American Bible Colleges offers scholarships to those who qualify. Contact American Bible Colleges at 1-800-997-4228 or visit the website abca.cc for more information. If you enjoyed those songs that I sang, uh, I just want to let you know that we have the, the new CD is, is complete and it's being duplicated now in, in, in that process. And uh, if you'd like to have a copy, uh, we've got several songs on there that are just, they're just awesome. I'm telling you, I, I'm blessed to be able to work with the, the group that I worked with in order to get this done. It was a long time in the making, but uh, it, it, it's uh, finished and God is going to be glorified. Uh, you can uh, email us here, uh, livingfaith at htnchannel.com, or you can call us at 800-997-4228, the numbers that's on your screen, or you can get, friend me on Facebook, and we can get that all together for you. Uh, we also have other products that's available, and uh, uh, you can go to philadelphiaministries.org to find out more about that. I'm just blessed to be able to uh, offer something up to the Lord. You know... We're living in times that it, we're under great trials. I mean, let's look at what's going on around us. It um, doesn't seem to be good, does it? It seems like the economy is completely off and all out of whack, and it seems like there's no real leadership. And I'm going to tell you, what, it, it, nothing is out of control. That's the one thing I want you to keep in your mind today, that nothing is out of control. The, the things of this world, if you are a child of God, the things of this world are trying to get into you. Don't let them. You are to maintain the peace of God which passes and surpasses all under understanding. And the way that we do that is by keeping our eyes focused properly. We don't focus on the things and the events of this world. We are to have our focus in heaven where our reward is. And it's, our reward is not having a mansion, or our reward is not having gold, our reward is not having position. Our reward is to be with Jesus now and forever. That's our reward. And when we keep our eyes on the Lord, all the things of the world, all the, the temporary instances of this world are going to just fall and not touch. Let me tell you, the person that David Reeves is inside of this thing, this flesh tent, cannot be touched with this world unless I permit them in to me. So don't permit these, these, uh, uh, this bad news. Don't permit this, this uh, uh, economy to get into you because it will poison your spirit. And the purpose today is to bring you this message, to be strong, to be of good cheer, to be of good courage, to know that Jesus is coming, that when these things are going on in the world, look up, the Bible says, that our redemption is drawing nigh. It's coming soon. He is coming again, just as he said he would. Our text for today comes out of the book of Judges, 
uh, chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, and it says, Now after death of, jo of Joshua, it came to pass, came to pass, that the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, Who shall go up for us against this, the Canaanites to fight against them? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up. Indeed, I have delivered the land into his hand. Judah, in the Bible, is uh, uh, praise, praise in the Hebrew. And who shall go up, or shall go up, is translated into who shall be exalted, or who shall be empowered. It has to do with the patriarchal blessing given to Abraham, and to Jacob, and to Isaac. And when we realize who we are in him, and who he is in us, then we understand that greater is he that's within us than he that's in the world. And when that understanding is complete and brought into fullness, then we can stand in the midst of the lion's den. We can pillow our head in the mane of the lion. We can, we can stand in the fiery furnace and still raise our hands up to the one who created us, to the one who called us by name and worship and praise him. We can praise him. There's an old song that says to praise on through. The fire that's come, the, the enemy that's come to the battle has brought the spoils to the battle. And it's up to us to praise on through that hardship or that testing, that time of trial, that we might receive the spoils that's been brought and use those spoils to conquer even more territory that has been allegedly, and I say allegedly uh, because the devil don't own anything. He's been de defeated, destroyed, and doomed at Calvary. But we take back the territory that the devil has stolen through individuals buying in to what he has lied to them about. Don't let this world get into you. You let the Spirit of God go. You let the Word of God go. You talk about the victory. You be the one that people looks at and say, you know, that person is Christ-like. That person is just like Jesus. Hallelujah. Who shall go up? Who shall be exalted and empowered? But you, the child of God. Hallelujah. Our covenant blessing provides for a threefold blessing upon us. It's, it's material. It's, uh, it's political. And it's cursing enemies. <laughs> you know, we can speak to our mountain. Be cast into the sea. The Bible says, if you speak that and you believe it in your heart, it shall be done for them. Hallelujah. You know, Judah was selected as the tribe of divine preeminence. Judah means praise that's mentioned over a thousand times in the word. It seems like that that would be important, don't you think? Something mentioned so many times, I think it has uh, significance. So a thousand times in the word praise establishes God's order of victory. See, we're supposed to be occupying. And occupying is what an army that's victorious does. When we went into Iraq several years ago, we went in there and we conquered it. And then the army occupied the territory. So there's, there's skirmishes here and there, but the country, the, the territory was conquered. And so it is with the kingdom of God. Jesus, he finished it and conquered Satan. He, he defeated Satan at the cross. He's defeated, doomed, and destroyed. Keep that in mind. Since Calvary. And what you and I are supposed to do is come in and occupy that which has been taken. Hallelujah. If we don't occupy it, the void will be filled with something. That reminds me of years ago when TV first came out and all the preachers, oh, we don't want to have anything to do with that devilish thing. Well, you don't have anything to do with it. That's why the devil took over it. Just imagine what would have happened if the body of Christ would have gathered around that wonderful new invention, the TV, and would have been on the airwaves all over the airwaves. Now we turn on the TV and we see very little of the cross. We'll see a channel here, a channel there, and even you know several channels, but in the scheme of things, it's very, very few, isn't it? Let's... Go and conquer the, the territory that was stolen by the adversary. Let's occupy the territory. Let's go into the darkened places and lighten them up by our very presence, by the light that's within us, the Jesus that's within us. Hallelujah. 
Judah became the source of blessing, and most of the prophets of the Old Covenant came from the praise, came from praise, came from the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. Jesus came from the tribe of Judah, but, and he wasn't a Levite. He broke religious tradition. Praise the Lord for that. You and I are to break religious tradition. We're supposed to have relationship. When Jesus was on the cross and he gave up the ghost, the, the veil was rent from the top to the bottom, and we had access to the Father. We didn't have to be a Levite to go behind closed doors or behind closed curtains into the Holy of Holies. We, who are his children, can go straight to the Father through Jesus with our praise, with our worship, with our requests, with our promises, and amen. So Jesus broke religious traditions, and so we're meant to as well. We don't have to go through a ritual. Although there's a pattern, there's, there's a method to salvation. We receive Jesus and we repent. You know, today on TV, on many good programs, there's a little prayer that you say, and from that little prayer, you're saved. Well, there's, that's yes, but no. The fact is, without repentance, there's, the salvation is not there. All, you know, now listen to me. We're saved by grace. And we receive that free gift of salvation. But our lives are supposed to have that meat. We're supposed to have that, that sign, the outward sign. And that is repentance. We turn away from our old ways, our old life, and we walk in a new way. We renew our minds with the word of God. We assemble together and we talk to the master, which is prayer. So repentance is very, very uh, necessary in salvation. When Judah goes first... In your battle, and many of you are having a hard time today. I know. Some of you are not working. Some of you have lost your job. Some of you are at your last stages of unemployment, and you don't know what they're going to do. But here's the thing. When praise goes first, the scepter of authority is placed properly during that time. When praise goes first, the scepter of authority is placed upon you through Christ to go into that battle and overcome that situation. Why? Because God inhabits the praises of his people. Listen to that now again. God inhabits the praises of his people. When we praise in the midst of a storm, in the midst of an attack, when we give praises and worship to God, the attack will diminish rapidly. Why? Because the devil will not give a reason for us to praise the Lord. He'll withdraw that attack. And Because what happens is most of us, we pray only during times of, of problems. And our prayers are something like this. You know, dear dad, camp's fine. Send money, your son. You know, we, we dictate to the most high God, and then we walk away before he has the opportunity to converse with us. And um, that shouldn't be. But the scepter of authority is in place because God inhabits the praises of his people. And when God is on the scene on our behalf, then the enemy retreats. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What would you rather have, a visitation or an abiding? You know, when we are in trouble and we, we cry out to the Lord, yeah, he hears he, and he comes and he delivers you. But... Would you want that, or would you rather have an abiding, a visitation and abiding? You know, praise. Let praise be continually on your lips. Let God abide with you continually. Let him have his abode within you, and let him be Lord over all parts of your life. Not just your Sunday morning part. Not just your Wednesday night part. Let all parts of your life make him Lord. The lion roars louder than the lion that seeks to devour. The lion of Judah roars louder than the lion that seeks to devour. Amen. The individual inheritance is set. The corporate inheritance is established. And the corporate agreement, you and I come into an agreement right now, is powerful. What agreement is that, David? The agreement is this. From this day forward, we will press in. I agree with you. 
Agree with me. We'll press in and press forward and let praise lead the way. Let praise establish the day. Let praise establish the day. Hallelujah. Praise is a warlike confrontation in the spirit realm. It's war. You don't want to uh, do something uh, in the natural. You want to do something in the spiritual because we live in a place that is dictated by spiritual presences and influences. And so we need to do something spiritual. We want to do something contrary to what the flesh would do, and that is found in the Word of God. And we display it through our lives. So we go to war on the floor. We war on our knees. We ask Daddy. We worship Daddy. We give praise to Daddy. Praise is of covenant significance as well. It establishes firmly in faith. It establishes firmly in faith in Christian action because you can't praise without doing something. You have to be doing something to effectively praise. I can't just stand here and say, yeah, I, you know, I praise the Lord. Well, I'm still doing something, but I can't stand here <laughs> and, and do nothing. I have to do something. Praise causes action, and action causes praise in Christ. When we give praise, he cloaks us under his wings. He who abides in the secret place of the Most High shall uh, 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 abide in the, under the shadow of the Almighty, shall dwell under the canopy of Shaddai, the one who supplies all of our needs. Amen. It nurtures us in growth. As we praise, we get nurtured by the Lord. How? Because He inhabits the praises. He builds us up through those praises. Hallelujah. He'll take us places that we never thought we could go. We can withstand more than what we thought we could. We have more patience than we ever thought we did have because He is with us because of the praise that rolls off our lips. Amen. Joel 3.16 says, The Lord will also roar from Zion and utter His voice from Jerusalem. The heavens and earth will shake, but the Lord will be a shelter for His people and the strength of the children of Israel. God won't forget you. God has never forgotten you. He's not taking his eye off you. The, the God who, who protects Israel never sleeps or slumbers. He watches over you, and he is jealous for you. Yeah, that's right. He's jealous for you. He wants all of you. Have you received Jesus as your Lord and Savior? This is your opportunity right now. If you don't know Jesus, I'm going to tell you what. Since I've received him, since I said yes to him. Since I have repented of my old ways and turned to him, my life has been sweet. Not necessarily externally. I've been through hell, folks. I'm going to tell you, I've been through hell. But I'm going to tell you that in that going through hell, I didn't stop, all right? I went on through, and I went on through with the assurance that he's getting me through. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to say this with me. Say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me of my sins. I sinned against you. I'm sorry. Come into my heart. Come into my life fully and cleanse me. Let me feel like that young boy or that young girl again. And I'll follow you. You are my Lord. You are my Christ, my Savior. From this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, Lord, for anyone who would pray that prayer with me, Lord, I ask that you would manifest yourself, make yourself apparent in that room that they're in, in, in that jail cell that they're in. Wherever they are, wrap your arms around them. Let them literally feel your presence now. Let them know that they've been forgiven from their head to their feet, that the past is gone, that you don't even remember it. Lord, let somebody be posted beside them that will instruct them in your ways. Let them have a desire for your word that they've never had before. Show yourself in that. Invade their dreams. Show them you. Let them see your glory. And Father, if there's any physical ailments with them right now, Lord, I ask that they would be healed right now in the name of Jesus. 
Amen. If you prayed that prayer and you received Jesus as Lord, call the prayer line. I'd love to talk to you. We've been getting your calls. We've ministered with many of you, and we love you. Again, if you'd like to get one of these CDs, give us a call, and we'll send it out to you. My time's up. Until next week, and all you're doing and going, Jesus is Lord. Thank you for watching. We trust you were blessed. Take a minute and write us today with your prayer requests and praise reports. Or, if you or your ministry would like to be a guest, you can contact us at www.philadelphiaministries.org or you can call us at 937-323-4897. And remember, God is no respecter of persons.